Did you know that there are over 2,200 known religions in the world? We are all born into one belief, religion, or faith, which influences how we see the world and everything and everyone in it, including ourselves. Do our beliefs divide and separate us, or do they bring us together in greater harmony? When you look up with awe on a star-filled night, do you ask who or what created all of this? Have you ever had a profound or deeply challenging experience in your life that changed your beliefs at the core of your being? Enlightened Pathways takes us on a journey of discovery to understand just how spiritual transformational experiences impact our lives and the world around us. Join us now as we deeply explore all that nourishes, heals, and inspires us. Welcome to Enlightened Pathways. Welcome. My name is Robert Kabeca, and I am your host today of Enlightened Pathways. And today, my guest, all the way from Arizona, is Phil Gustafson. Welcome, Phil. I met Phil a few years ago um, when I was in a NLP coaching certification. And during that time, I met Phil in a number of our online sessions and I asked Phil one time if he could coach me on a couple things. And he and I have been talking and meeting and collaborating ever since. Uh, Phil has become very endeared to me. Um, I cherish our conversations. Uh, we meet uh, every couple weeks to have conversations about our own growth, what's going on in our lives. How can we be of support to each other? Uh, he has been a uh, spiritual uh, gold mine, for lack of a better word, for me, uh, so that I am able to explore my own growth, but not only that, to be able to understand how to perceive other people's growth in their own life and how I can contribute to that as well. He recently relocated to Arizona from Massachusetts, and one thing that's really obvious to me is that he's always complaining about how cold it is in Arizona. So, um, <laughs> So with that, I, I, I give you uh, my friend and mentor, uh, Phil. Well, Robert, it, it's a delight to be able to catch up with you uh, this way. I, I'd hoped to be able to travel to, to Portland. That just didn't work. So I, I'm traveling electronically to be with you and engage in the, this conversation. We've had some great conversations over the last couple of years, and I look forward to, to our time together today. Yeah, so I, I, I like to start out our conversations by starting with a very simple question about, you know, what was early life like for you in your recollection of your own spiritual growth or religion that you were brought up in or belief system and when you became aware of that and what that awareness at that time did for you? Well, uh, when I was born, my, my, uh, my mother was living with, my, uh, my, with her in-laws uh, my dad was uh, overseas uh, serving uh, serving our military during the end of the Korean conflict. And so I, I did not meet my dad until I was 10 months old. Uh, but uh, she uh, was Baptist by background, but my grandparents uh, were, were were Lutheran. And so she decided to take uh, take her her son to the Lutheran church and 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 see about him him being raised there. So my early memories were uh, that of going to the uh, the Swedish Lutheran Church, and and uh, uh, which actually moved from Swedish to English during during my early years. Uh, but also uh, when we we'd sing those songs and hear those hear hear the the preaching in the morning, and then in the afternoon, my mother as we got home would put on the LP player and play Tennessee Ernie Ford and several other of her Baptist. Uh, favorite uh, hymns. So I grew up with with music from both traditions and an appreciation for for a variety within our within our Christian faith. When did you recognize that you might have started to actually become aware of what that faith actually meant to you as a young person, and when you might have started to maybe not question it, but explore uh, what its role was in your life. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm one of these, I guess, rare people who uh, do not remember a time when I didn't have a, a faith journey as part of my life. Uh, I did, uh, because of my mother's background, uh, being uh, non-Lutheran or, or being in a, in a kind of a Baptist tradition, uh, I 
had 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 the experience had a chance to experience that when I was uh, friends of mine uh, in growing up in Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, many of my friends were of the Roman Catholic tradition, and so I got to uh, to learn some of that, uh, some of their their beliefs, some of the differences, and and some of the similarities we had uh, with uh, so in early probably in fifth or sixth grade that I started realizing there were some differences and experienced some level of judgment for having a different type of tradition than, than, than several of my friends around me, uh, whether I was going to hell or not, those kinds of things. And I was more interested in seeing what we can find in common uh, rather than, than what, what divides us. I, I, what, what differences we had, I always saw as different ways of diversity. I uh, would be. I wouldn't use that term when I was in fifth grade, but I, I would see differences as as an opportunity for diversity, not for division, uh, and not for judgment. So that that was, and that was kind of a, 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 a way that I I grew up with that in mind. I had some questions as to whether the Lutheran tradition was indeed the right one for me, uh, but I had already uh, before I was looking at that. I at the age of twelve was visiting with my cousins. Uh, and and we were all talking about what we're going to be when we grow up, and uh, and and uh, my uh, my cousins gave their responses. They asked me what I was going to be. I said either going to be a a jet pilot, jet, jet pack pilot, or a pastor. And uh, they broke out laughing because they realized that I was not good pastor material from my behavior. But um, I uh, but my, when my parents heard this, within half an hour, I was meeting with my pastor. Uh, and he said, well, I've seen that in you. You're going that direction. He wanted me to challenge me to broaden my understandings so that I could see if this was a good fit for me or not. And, and uh, so I did that. Um, what, 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 was, what was really faith shaping for me after that was, was time spent at a, 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 a church camp, a Lutheran church camp, uh, Camp Lutheran, where I had a chance to meet people of various uh, ethnic backgrounds, various Many of them were Lutheran, some were not, uh, but uh, they were uh, racially disparate as well as, uh, as, as lifestyle disparate. So we had, had a chance to, to expand my faith and be challenged uh, in, in, in ways that, uh, with, with the camp. So that was a very helpful time for me. Um, my early years in school were, were uh, in, a, in a school that was 50% uh, African-American, 50% Caucasian. Uh, then at, in fourth, third grade, I moved to, to a, a school which had 600 students, five of which were black. And then when I went to junior high, I was back to a 50-50 population again. Most of my friends who grew up in the school with only five black had no experience with, with that kind of diversity. And I was kind of seen as a stranger because I had no problem looking at a person, uh, chromatic differences or whatever, uh, but just working, uh, just looking to, at, at the person's uh, the content of their character, as Dr. King would would, would later ascribe very nicely, uh, and so that those those factors all kind of went into it. I, I I looked at at things as I went to college. I was a psychology major. I was uh, in track to go into a PhD program in psychology, but the chair of the department, who was an avowed atheist, asked me uh, what I was planning on doing after I got my PhD. I said I was going to go to seminary. He said, "Well, why don't you? We have all the PhDs in psychology we need." But your 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 God needs you as a pastor. So why don't you just skip the PhD and go to go into ministry? And that was a that was that was a good experience for me uh, to hear hear that affirmation from him. And um, uh, I, I, and just uh, my experience in seminary it was in in Philadelphia. I grew up in Erie, which was a medium sized city. Uh, college was in a small town, so going to an urban center to to be able to to experience the diversity there and, and the different different faith backgrounds was always was always helpful for me to look at what what differences we have how they can how they can point to the same thing and that's that's kind of been a, a draw for me in my ministry as as has been looking at that um, I don't get into the big picture of, of making general statements that that should everybody should fit into uh, I, I I kind of like the the image of uh, in in faith, uh, the parable of the lost sheep or the lost coin. I tend to focus on that lost sheep or the lost coin than I do the ninety nine or the nine, uh, and that's uh, kind of where uh, behind me I have an image that a, a friend of mine crafted for me as, as I retired from uh, active ministry. Uh, 
uh, my last sermon was on starfish. Uh, so I, rather than having crosses up on my wall, which I've had in the past, I, I, I chose to put the starship, starfish up. There's a story uh, that I was taught by, by one of our NLP uh, people uh, about uh, a, a beach with loaded with starfish and a gentleman walking on the beach and seeing a, a young a young boy picking up a starfish and throwing it into the sea. And he goes, well, what are you doing? So I'm picking up a starfish and throwing it back into the sea so I can live. He goes, well, there's this beach is filled with hundreds of starfish. You can't make a difference. And the boy picked up the one starfish, threw it in and turned to the man and said, I made it for that one. And that's kind of that's been kind of my focus uh, is, is, is as we look at differences, as we look at diversity, what is the one thing that we can that can help that person journey uh, forward to connect with a God who loves them? And uh, that's kind of that's been kind of my faith. My faith journey has been in the Lutheran Church uh, as, as a pastor of, of various size congregations. But uh, even though I preached to crowds of uh, anywhere up to 300 most times in the, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, uh, I'm looking for the one who needs to encounter a, a gracious God in their life that day. And if I can find a way to, to invite that one to connect with God, I'm feeling I, I succeeded. That's remarkable. And I love the story of the starfish, absolutely. Because I know for me, in my own journey, sometimes I can feel quite helpless in how I can make a difference. It's like there's just so much going on. What can I do to make a difference? And even if I do make a difference, it's not going to be big enough to matter, and it's got to be, it's got to matter, you know, it's got to matter, and, you know, that type of thing. And forgetting that the most powerful place that I could ever be in my life is here in the present moment with whomever it is that I am with, and that's the only place that I can ever make any kind of a difference, you know, and... I think that for me, a big lesson in that regard has been to um, re reduce what I, you know, hold in, not in my imagination, but in my mind as, as what I think is good enough or big enough or important enough, you know, enough, 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 et cetera, you know, by misheld or misappropriated beliefs in the past that tell me that oh, what you're doing is just so insignificant, it's not going to make a difference. But, you know, like you, you know, for, for many decades, I've had the opportunity to work with people who, you know, on the brink of life and death and being able to make the difference sometimes, unfortunately not all the time, but sometimes to where they're able to live for another day, if, if not, you know, for even much longer. Um, so I know that like in today's day and age right now with everything that we got going on on the planet, sometimes uh, in my conversation with people they can feel quite overwhelmed. It's like, well, what can I do? What difference can I make? How can I show up? Maybe you can talk to that for a moment. Sure. I, um, I think that, that, that being in the present moment, I mean, we, we have our past and 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 at times our past have scarred us uh but uh but our past can also instruct us uh and my, I, I i try to play the game of golf and and much of my game is based on trying to overcome my mistakes in my past <laughs> but try to try to focus on where, where i'm at each time i think for for people Your past should inform you, but should not control you. Uh, and, 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 and your future is open with a, a variety of paths based on the choices you make at this time. And, and, and I, I seek when, when I'm working with someone, uh, sometimes I've been privileged to journey with someone in, in their end of life cycle. Other times as they're making life decisions, uh, vocational, uh, relational, uh, just to just to be able to help them imagine what can th things can be and what what are they hoping to accomplish with what they're doing uh, and and sometimes having people be able to articulate for the, perhaps for the first time uh, what what their choices can mean can help find help them find a, a, a better path I mean uh, uh, 
Yogi, Yogi Berra's, uh, when you come to the fork in the road, take it. Uh, there, there, there is a, a sense of, of going both both ways, but let's explore which way, can, can, which outcome can we, can we see and understand that we can't control everything. We can just control what we're doing now. But, but if we have an awareness of what might be, uh, we can prepare ourselves for that. And and then that's that's a lot of what I do in in, in when I've been privileged to 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 preach with, with with a group of people, is help with stories and metaphors to help people create their own vision from there what they're going to do. Uh, I'm not a person who gives you three steps and this is how you have a better life. Uh, I'm I'm more of a person. Let's tell a story, and and uh, I, I I take. I, I, I take my pattern uh, from my, my my ultimate mentor, which is which is uh, my, 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 uh, Jesus Christ, who, whenever he was asked a hard question, would always let me tell you a story, and 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 and, and uh, you know would, would would do those would do those those metaphorical stories so well that we call them parables or or or, or whatever. But uh, I think in, in, as we as we listen, have a chance to listen to uh, to a person who's in those situations, to help them uh, free them up from, from bondage to their past, to opening to a, to, to, to a brighter future. And, and uh, one of the gifts I, I, I've appreciated in, in the Lutheran tradition, when we're at our best, when we're at our worst, we, I don't want to go there, but when we're at our best, uh, we, we live in, in what NLP calls meta-programs, in the tension between either ors. Uh, and, 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 and that living in that, in that, in that tension in between can, can be a very helpful way to, to look at things. So we're not at one end or the other. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, uh, if, politically I'm not red or blue, I, I guess purple, but I, I, I see, I see good in both sides and what we can craft as a, as a nation is based on when we can lift up the best of both and kind of de demolish the worst of both, uh, both sides. And I think the same thing comes with, 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 with people's faith journeys. Uh, too many people have experienced uh, church or in the Christian faith uh, in, in fear of rather than in, 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 in moving towards. I'm, I'm afraid of hell. I'm afraid of judgment. I'm afraid of this. And, and, and certainly there, there's, a, there's a cause for things. Are we in, in times those kinds of things? But if we live our life around fear, uh, it limits what we can do. If we live our life around hope or faith or trust or love, that opens up gates for us to be able to do things, to overcome fear, to overcome things. That's so. That's kind of, kind of where, you know, and that's again with the starship, uh, with the starfish. I'm sorry, the starship, the starfish. Uh, we want to travel out of space, I guess. But in the starfish story, that I can help the one, and helping the one open a future. Who knows what's going to happen when that starfish enters the water? but it has a chance at living life that it didn't have before. And I think it's interesting that fear has with it so much energy that can be all encompassing. And for me, for many years, I know that fear felt overwhelming where I felt like I had no choice but to live my life in reaction to that fear. And then through various methodologies, spiritual teachings, NLP, core transformation, et cetera, so all these different methodologies, I can learn how to interpret that energy and instead of labeling it fear, I can actually tap into the energy of it and redirect that energy to where it's going to most support me and be the most resourceful for me. So because when I get into fear mode for me, and I guess for most folks possibly, is that I put myself into victim mode. I have to defend and it's self-preservation and it's me against. So if it's me against, all my barriers come up and who do I trust and why am I trusting and how long should I trust you for, et cetera. So I spend all this energy trying to figure things out instead of just being able to unlabel that energy from fear and actually utilize it in a more resourceful way that's where I can actually experience unconditional love, compassion, acceptance, you know, forgiveness. Reality, I mean, the, the sure. you know, our, our, our uh, 
subconscious mind, uh, uh, fight, flight, or freeze. Uh, fear, fear can generate uh, one of those three immediate decisions before we're consciously thinking about it. But then what we can, you know, what we can do is we can allow that fear to control us and in, in, in form all our decisions, or it can inform us as to what we can do. Uh, after our initial reaction of flight, fight, or freeze, what can we do the process? Is this fear life-threatening? Is there something I can do about it? And that's, that's I think, part of where faith uh, in, in spirituality can help, is if we have an anchor uh, beyond uh, that fear, beyond ourself, beyond our feelings, if, if, we, if we have an anchor uh, that leads us to, to trust, to faith, or to, or to love, uh, which can give us the gift of hope, uh, St. Paul once wrote, faith, hope, and love, these three abide. The greatest of these is love. That, that, that I think love is, is the ultimate answer to the fears of life. If we're afraid of judgment, uh, uh, you know, we, we, can you control judgment? No. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. What can you do? Well, in the meantime, I can live a life of love as opposed to a life of fear. I can, I, I, I can embrace the world and can embrace, embrace those around me to assist them any way I can or I can just lock everything up and build a moat around my castle. Um, it, it, fear or faith, which way do you want to go? And, 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 and both of those can, will result in a, different, in, in a different type of life. Um, you mentioned earlier the, the fork in the road. Um, and which one do you take? Am I going to go down that road of love and faith? Or am I going to you know, go down that road of you know, fear? you know, and all that that entails. Um, which, what do you do on a regular basis to support and nourish your continued spiritual growth? Um, I continue in, in, in my retirement. I, I continue to, to gather with others for worship. Um, I, I think that 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 that's a, that is a key ingredient for me to connect with other people, uh, focusing on on God, and, and that's uh, it's not all Lutheran worship. It, 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 it's different types. I think there's a wealth of traditions within the Christian tradition. There's also a wealth of traditions around around faith communities around the world. Our, our, our Buddhist friends, our our, our our Islamic friends, our Jewish friends. All have a wealth of spirituality that we can tap into that can that can benefit us. Our Native American uh, religions and some of the other pagan religions can 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 lead us very very in very helpful uh, directions. I I also do spend uh, try to spend some focused time every day uh, just kind of meditating. Sometimes it's around uh, a practice in, in, in uh, spirituality called Alexia Divino, where you read a particular writing, uh, either of sacred texts or of, of, of contemplation, and, and, re and read it, and then uh, uh, read it to stop, and then, and then reflect upon it, then read it again. What is, it, what, it, what is God telling me in this? And read it again. And sometimes... Uh, sometimes it's 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 reading uh, uh, you know scripture or 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 or, or, or some other uh, overt religious writing. Sometimes it's reading uh, just a a, a um, an, another source. Uh, you know, to me, uh, C.S. Lewis is 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 often uh, the Screw Tape Letters has, has been one that I've I've used a few times. Uh, J.R. Tolkien's uh, uh, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Uh, don't, not all three parts of the Hobbit movie, but but uh, at least the, the the story itself leads some good some some good reflections as to what I would do, what we could do, what could, what might have happened differently, and those those are ways that I I, I retap with myself. Um, but I, I do like connecting with others uh, on a regular basis for for uh, communal worship, uh, and and, uh, and 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 uh, and conversation afterwards learn what what maybe I got from something or that what somebody else got it that I never that I never saw and and and, and uh, hearing someone else uh, preach uh, they'll often take a, a, a journey a entirely different direction than I ever would but it's been a great drive it's a great ride to take on and a great experience to have that's fantastic and I'm just curious where do you see yourself going, I, you said retirement, but I happen to know it's retirement 2.0. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
colleague of mine from the NLP circle, Steve McVeigh, and I talk about our realignment, not retirement, that we are, we are realigning our, ourselves. My, my friend, uh, Greg Uthis, who, who, who painted that wonderful picture, uh, has also uh, retooled himself in, in the life post-ministry uh, which in, in, in a great way, and I, I, I deeply appreciate their friendship. Um, I'm doing part of that, that starfish imagery has been, in my last years in ministry, has been doing a lot of coaching. Uh, working with people one-on-one -on -one to, to take them either formally or informally from a present state to a desired outcome. It could be sometimes a problem, or it could just be a direction they want to go. I, I've done this with individuals. I, I, I was privileged in my, in my uh, retirement to, to work with a congregation whose pastor had died and, and to, to serve as the interim pastor until, until such time as they call a new pastor and help that congregation move from their present state of grief and of, 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 of doubt and, 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 and struggle to a, a healthy position so that when the new pastor arrived, they were in a good place. And, and if God willing, uh, that may be another, another journey for me. But I also am working with, with, with uh, coaches um, to help other coaches uh, do things well. I work with the uh, uh, ICF Arizona chapter uh, with professional development to seek uh, help provide tools for coaches to go. I also have a course at the INAP Center on, uh, on spiritual leaders, that there are some unique things about spiritual leadership uh, that, 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 that uh, coaching can help and, and, and NLP can help them understand that. So I work with them in that program. Uh, so those are some of the, some of the things, but I'd, I'd, I'd like to do one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching or group coaching or team coaching. I lo love doing those as well to help move from that present state to that desired outcome. Well, thank you so much, Phil, for that. And unfortunately, that is all the time that we have today to speak with Phil. I really appreciate your time here. And I look forward to talking with you again, uh, off camera, as it were. Uh, <laughs> and faithmindset.net. And uh, if you wish to be in touch with me, I'll be happy to do that. I, I, I had a great webmaster who, who got that site up for me web link up on our credits and on our website as well so you, uh, if you'd like to you can get in touch with Phil and just a few closing remarks and a shout out to today's executive producer and sponsor Bridge to Heaven Healing and Leap and Lizards which is the premier source for healing crystals and readings with four locations you can visit www dot leapinlizards dot biz for more information. Also, a big thanks to our co-executive producer, Dr. Annika Becca, the creator of Mighty Maca Plus, the daily nourishing supplement that improves metabolism and reinvigorates the body. Visit drannikabecca.com for more information. Also, if you would like to get more information about this show, to reach out to us or to sponsor us, please visit www.deepbeing.org. And a quick shout out to the crew, director Patrick McCartan, audio and sound Dale Ashby, and cameras Travis Nadeau, as well as to the Portland Media Center and their team, Tom, Dino, and Warren. Thank you for watching Enlightened Pathways and spending your valuable time with us today. Until next time, play, have fun, be happy. <laughs>